Hi, my name is Gerald Simon. I'm the president and founder of Music Motivation. And today, I'm going to play for you a fun little exercise. This is called Having Fun with the 251 Chord Progression. Every Tuesday, I come out with a brand new Theory Tip Tuesday. And it's something I've created to help piano students and piano teachers understand more about three primary areas. One I call Theory Therapy, where I teach theory the fun way and help students understand that if they want to create and compose and arrange music, they need to know their theory. But I try to present it in a fun way where the students can understand it and learn how to use it. To bridge the gap between the theory they learn and the pieces they play. The second aspect that I like to focus my videos on, I call innovative improvisation. Where I teach students how to improvise. How to take a song and change it up. Change the style, change keys. How to make it their own. And the last area I focus on, I call creative composition, where I like to teach students how to begin composing music of their own. To begin with, I'm going to start with a 2-5-1 chord progression. In jazz music, jazz musicians follow a chord progression similar to other styles, but they tend to do a 2-5-1 chord progression. Now, if you watch my hands up here, 2 progression. Two, five, one. So let's talk about this for a second. If I'm in the key of C major and I go from the key of C, this C, up an octave, that is my C major scale. Well, what jazz musicians do, they play seventh chords. If you notice, I am playing the note and skipping one after the other. Right there, I have C, E, G, and B. C, E, G, and B. That is my C major 7th chord. If I slide to the right, this is my D minor 7th chord. If I slide to the right again, this is E minor 7th. Slide to the right one more time, this is F major 7th. If I keep going, this is the G 7th. If I slide to the right one more time, this is the A minor 7th. And then if I slide to the right again, this is called B minor 7 flat the 5th. Kind of a weird title for the chord, but it's called a B minor 7 flat the 5th chord because my B major 7th chord has the basic B major triad with the major 7th interval up on top. But if I lower that 7th interval half a step, that's a minor 7th interval, this becomes a B 7th chord. If I play a B minor 7th chord, I took my 3rd interval down half a step. That's a B minor 7th chord. So then my 5th interval, if I take that down half a step as well, then I create B minor 7 flat the 5th chord. And that's kind of the theory behind that chord. And then I end with a C major 7th chord. C major 7th, D minor 7th, E minor 7th, F major 7th, G 7th, sometimes I refer to it as G dominant 7th, A minor 7th, B minor 7th flat the 5th, and C major 7th. Well, that is my chord progression, and I'm following the C major scale. It's very simple to play, but what jazz musicians do, they follow a 2 5 1 chord progression using 7th chords. And later on we can take those 7th chords and vary them and start adding 9th and do other interesting, fun, cool things. But for now, we're going to assign a number value to each of these chords. C major 7 is 1. The D minor 7 is 2. We're going in order numerically as we follow the chord progression up the C major scale. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, since the C major seventh is the same chord, we start and end on that chord. So they are following the chord progression by playing the D minor seventh chord, the two chord, then they jump up to the seventh chord, I mean the five chord, which in this case is the G seventh chord, then they come down to the one chord, which is the C major seventh. Again, watch that. D minor seventh. G dominant 7th down to C major 7th. That is their chord progression. 
D minor 7th, G dominant 7th, down to the C major 7th. What we're going to do is practice playing that chord progression, but instead of going all the way up to that G7th in root position, we're going to do an inversion. Now, however many chords, you, however many notes you have in a specific chord, that will tell you how many positions you have. If I have four notes in my chord, that means I have four positions. In this case, this is D minor 7th. When D is on the bottom, and I have D, F, A, C, this is my D minor 7th chord. Well, this is root position. If I put the D up on top, this is first inversion. If I put the F up on top, that is second inversion. If I put the A up on top, that is third inversion. And then I'm back to root position. Root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, and back up to root position. It's the same chord. It's just a D minor seventh chord, but I changed the position. Whatever note is on top is the melody you hear. So if I have the C on top, I'm going to hear that C, it will stand out more than the rest of the notes. If I have the D up on top, I will hear the D better. And many times they will use whatever note is on top to play a melody. And then they put the seventh chord below the melody. So I'm going to play D minor seventh in root position, and now I'm going to take my G mate, my G dominant seventh chord. I'll play it up here so you can see better. There's my G seventh chord. I'm going to take that first inversion, second inversion, third inversion. So what we are going to focus on is this position right here. This is second inversion. I start with D minor seventh chord in root position, and then I play the G dominant seventh chord in second inversion. I end with the C major 7th chord in root position. Again, let's try it. D minor 7th chord, root position, G 7th chord, 2nd inversion, and then I have my C major 7th chord, root position. D minor 7th chord, root position, G dominant 7th chord, and sometimes I say G 7th, and sometimes I say dominant 7th, they both mean the same thing. So, D minor 7th, root position to the G 7th chord, 2nd inversion, to the C major 7th, root position. And practice that. Play it a few times, and see if you can get the fingering. Now, the easiest fingering I have found, and the fingering varies for different people. Sometimes, different fingers work for different people. For me personally, I do not have piano hands. I have these short, stubby little hands, but at the same time, I'm double-jointed, so all of my fingers lock on me when I'm playing. With my own piano students, I tell them I want them to curve their fingers and keep their fingers nice and curved and arched, because it helps get a better sound. But when I'm playing, sometimes people will say, you look like a jazz pianist when you play. And they're not saying that in a good way. <laughs> I love jazz. I was classically trained. But I love all styles. Pop, jazz, rock, every kind of style, I enjoy playing it. For me, my fingers lock up sometimes. So when I'm playing a piece, sometimes my fingers will lock on me, and they'll be straight, and I can't bend my fingers. So I have to snap and hit my fingers. It's not a good problem to have, and I don't think very many people actually play that way. Most people can't even tell when I'm hitting my fingers to unlock my fingers. But watch this, I'm going to play, and the fingering I'm using right here, I use this one, two, three, five, and I keep the fourth finger up. And I use the same fingering right there. For the most part, for most of the chords, with a few exceptions and some variations and inversions of the chords, the fourth fingers on both hands do not play as often as the other fingers. With that being said, different people have different fingerings that work best for them according to their hand size, 
how long their fingers are. Some people have really big hands, like Rachmaninoff, and they can go all over the keys. Okay, some people have really small hands and they can't reach as far. So do whatever works best for you. The fingering I am using for this example, I don't have my fourth finger. See that? Now with your left hand, it may feel more comfortable and more natural for you to put your fourth finger right there. My fourth finger, again, I don't have piano hands. I love playing the piano, and I love being a pianist, a professional pianist. But my fourth finger, I cut off when I was four years old. So it's at an angle. So sometimes it feels weird for my finger to play some of these chords with the fourth finger. So it feels more natural for me to use the third finger because I have a natural deformity. Well, I mean, it was chopped off, but I have that problem. So it depends on the individual person. But let's look at this 2, 5, 1 chord progression, and we're going to play around with it. I'm going to break it apart. With my right hand, I'm going to play broken, where I break the chord apart. And then I'll go to the next chord, break it apart. So watch that again. This is my 2-5-1, 2. Five, one, two. some of these notes and I'm changing the rhythm. Now it doesn't matter which notes I play from the chord as long as I'm playing a D minor 7th chord. It doesn't matter which of those notes I play, or even what order I play them in, because they all sound great. The rhythms may change, the order of the notes may change. Many times with students, I will say, play a blocked chord with your left hand, and play the 2 five, one chord progression with the right hand, break it apart. Watch what I'm going to do. With my left hand, I play the blocked chord. With my right hand, I'm going to say I'm going to go up. Go up the chord each time. I'm starting with the bottom note of the chord and moving up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and I'm swinging those eighth notes. One and two and three and four and 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 I went up. What if I came down? I'll start at the top and I'll come down of each chord. See that? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So I'm going up and coming down. I can switch it up. Sometimes I can go up, sometimes I can come down. I'll come down. I'll go up. I'll come down. I'll go up. Now, I'm only playing eighth notes. What if I start doing some triplets? Da da da. Triplet. Triplet. Sometimes I will tell students to think of strawberry, 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 strawberry. See how I'm, I'm quickly going through the triplet, 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 and I'm taking those same notes from the chord.
Again, you can play around with this chord progression. For now, we are in the key of C, doing the 2, 5, 1 chord progression in the key of C major. Primarily, jazz musicians will follow what is called the circle of fourths, meaning they're going backwards through the entire key signatures, all the circle of key signatures. Sometimes classical music musicians refer to the circle of fifths, where they go from the key of C to the key of G to the key of D, A, E, and they're moving according to the sharps. Key of C, they don't have any sharps. They go to the key of G, they have one sharp. It's an F sharp. Well, jazz musicians and classical musicians really do kind of run in different circles because most classical musicians prefer following the circle of fifths and going through all the sharps, and most jazz musicians prefer following the circle of fourths going through all of the flats, where they go to the key of C to the key of F major, where they have one flat, a B flat. And then from the key of F, they prefer to go to the key of B flat, where they have two flats. B flat and E flat. And the reason why they do that is because of this 2 5 1 chord progression. If we had a circle of fifths chart up on the page, you could see how we would be going around from C to F to B flat. But if you go back and you look at C, G, D, following the circle of fifths around, you can see that the D is essentially the 2 chord in the key of C major, the 2. Then we will move to the 5, which would be G, and then 1 is C, 2, D minor 7th, then we go to the 5, G, the 1, C major 7th. Well, when we move over to the key of F major, now G minor 7th, the progression is always a minor 7th followed by the dominant 7th and ending with the major 7th. So now the 2 chord in the key of F major, here we're in the key of F major, we have one flat, it's a B flat. Well, the 2 chord, if I went up, my 2 chord is right here, it's a G minor 7th chord. The 5 chord is the C 7th chord, the C dominant 7th chord. And we go to the 1, which is F major 7th. If I do my inversion again, I start on the G minor 7th in root position, then I would go to the C dominant 7th, and this is in second inversion, and end with F major 7th. Well, that chord progression is the same for every key signature. I'm going to move around through every key following the circle of force. Watch this. D minor 7th, we go to G dominant 7th, and we play C major 7th. Then we go to the key of F. Now we're playing a G minor 7th, followed by the C 7th. Then we have F major 7th. Now we're going to go to the key of B flat major, where we have two flats. We have a C minor 7th chord, followed by the F dominant 7th. And then here we have the B flat major 7th chord. Again, that progression remains the same as we go through every key signature. Watch this. Doesn't matter where I go, the progression remains the same, every single key signature. And we're not going to go through all the keys right now, I don't want to overwhelm anyone. But for now, we're going to practice key of C, and then also key of F. And work on getting those progressions. Again, key of C. There's my 2, my 5, and my 1. Now, I will come over here. 2, 5, 1. That's the key of F. 2, 5, 1. Your G minor 7th chord, followed by the C dominant 7th, followed by the F major 7th. And try breaking those apart. C, doing the 2, 5, 1, and then I went to the key of F, doing the 2, 5, 1, and I just went from 1 to the next, 2, 5, 1, key of C, now key of F, 2, 5, 1, and I can go through every key doing that, 2, 5, Jazz music.
musicians will take this 2-5-1 chord progression and play around with it. And there are many different ways you can do that. I'm going to show you a few examples right now, and then I'll have you try some of these. And that is all we are going to do for today. Watch this. This is the 2-5-1 in the key of C major. But now I'm going to make it really flowery and really embellish it. I'm going to start here. There's my 5. And I can go up and down the keyboard. 1. Now with my right hand, I'm taking the notes from the chord and breaking them apart. 2. I start right here. Remember how we talked about root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion? I have four notes, so I have root position. Then I go to first inversion when I take the C and put the C up on top. Then I go to right here, my root, first inversion, second inversion when I have the E up on top, third inversion when I have the G up on top. And I would have you practice doing all of the inversions. It's actually a good exercise to practice playing all of the seventh chords from the C major scale. Practice doing every inversion. Root, C major seventh, root, first, second, third, root. I'll play it up here so you can see it. C major seven, root, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, back up to the root position again. Now, D minor seventh, root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, back up to the root position. Now I'm going to go to the E minor seventh, root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, back up to the E minor seventh chord root position again. We're up an octave higher though. F major seventh, now it's root position, followed by first inversion, then we go to second inversion, third inversion, and we're back up to the root position again. The G seventh chord, we have root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, back up again to root position. Then we go to the A minor seventh chord, root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, back up to root position. And then the B minor seven flat the fifth chord, that's kind of the weird sounding chord. This is root position. Put the B up on top, first inversion. Second inversion, third inversion, and back up to root position. And then I am back to C major 7. I would have you practice playing both hands, doing every single inversion, moving up according to the C major scale, using all 7th chords. And then I would have you break them apart. Maybe even practice doing the inversions broken. You see what I'm doing? I'm going up and I'm taking that chord and breaking it apart. Moving up according to the different inversions. playing those chords. Well, that is what I was doing with my right hand. Start on the two.
match with the seventh chords. The 2-5-1 chord progression is wonderful. Have fun with that, play around with it, see what you can come up with. It's not too difficult, and again, it's a matter of taking the chord and breaking the notes apart. change up the style, maybe try to break it apart with the left hand while the right hand plays the block. And soon, eventually, we'll start going through every key signature where you can practice following the circle of force. I've included that exercise as part of this free PDF download. And you can practice playing each of them, and then we will start to embellish and add upon what we have learned today. The 2-5-1 is a simple little chord progression. Let me play a little example just to show you what you can do and have fun with this 2-5-1 chord progression as we start embellishing and as we start learning more about the chords and then some scales we can add to it. Two, five, one, two, five, one. Now my left hand, I'm doing a whole half, half step walking bass pattern where I start on two and then I go to five and go to one. Exercise. Sometimes you can go from the two chord to the five chord, and then go to another two chord to another five chord. And then end with a one chord eventually. Hope you've had fun with this. Play around with the two five one chord. It is fun. It's a jazzy chord progression. It's very simple to start playing around with and just break those chords apart. See what you can come up with. I'd love to hear back from you. Let me know how you are enjoying these videos, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You can visit my website, musicmotivation.com. I have several resources available that anyone can visit and download from my website. And you can find more videos on my YouTube page at youtube.com slash Hope you have a great day. Again, have fun. Piano is a great instrument. Keyboards are wonderful. Music is meant to be enjoyed by those who listen to the music and also those who create music. So I encourage you to create wonderful music that others will enjoy listening to and that you will enjoy playing and performing for them. Have a great day, and as always, have fun.